Hello and welcome back to Funfairs and I. Kayland Amusements, also known as Kayland Port Rush, is located across the road from Barry's Amusements. It's a relatively small park, which is famous for including the Hellraiser Waltzer. With it having such a small lineup consisting of family friendly attractions, you'd think that the past of this park would include rides that are mild, more family friendly attractions. But that is where you're wrong. This park has had a history of extreme rides built by Fabry, multiple Miamis, as well as some downright just strange rides. This was thanks to the park's former owner, John W. Adcroft, who in the mid-1990s built up a collection of thrilling flat rides at the park, but slowly devolved them over the years before selling the park to Thomas Wilmot. This is the former attractions of Kayland Portrush. Before we begin, I'd just like to note that photos and videos of the rides at Kayland in the 80s and 90s are extremely hard to come by, so I had to use footage of the same ride model in its later life or rides with a similar design. And with that out of the way, let's look at the roller coasters. There's two to look at. Up first is a small kitty coaster, which back then was called Roller Coaster. The coaster opened at the park in 1994 and was very similar to a coaster that had previously operated at Barry's Amusements in the 60s. The coaster was manufactured by BA Shift and Associate and would operate until 1997 when it was sold and put into storage. In 2001, the ride was brought out of storage and renamed to Crazy Chase. It was sold to Telford Park Funfair who operated the ride until 2005 and then sold it to the Holland family who still travel the ride to this day. The other coaster that operated at the park opened in July of 2019 and was a runaway train coaster. The ride opened about two weeks before the view opened which is the 40 meter observation wheel. As for the ride itself, it was just a normal runaway train coaster, nothing too special. It stayed at the park until the end of the 2019 season. Now let's move on to the flat rides. The first flat ride we're looking at is Scat. The ride opened in 1983, which was the same year Kegeland opened. Before John Adcroft bought this attraction, it had been owned by UK showman Joe William and before that it had operated at Frontierland Family Theme Park and even before that it had operated at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This attraction was manufactured by Fair Place and there's not many of these left in the world. Most can be found at American Carnivals and one can be found at Bay Beach Amusement Park. It would continue to operate at Kayland until 1992 where it was sold to Billy Joe Butlin. After it being sold multiple times, it ended up in Ireland and was last seen under the ownership of Alan McFadden in 2015. It is now believed that the ride has been scrapped. Opening the same year was Rocco Plane. The ride was manufactured by the Ireland Aircraft Company and had previously operated in the US for a couple years. When the ride was at Kayland, it kept its original style seating, but when it was sold later on, it did get forward facing seats. As for the ride itself, it operated in the style of the ferris wheel, except it would run much faster which would lead to the cars being flipped upside down. The ride left Kayland in 1994 and it was sold to Albert Castley, who runs Castley's Extreme Fun Fair. Then in 2007, it was sold to the McFadden's Fun Fair, who still own the ride to this day, but it has now been renamed to Avalanche. We're now moving forward to 1991 when John Adcroft bought his first ever waltzer. Ulster scene. The ride was built in 1936 and was built by R.J. Lackin. When it first operated with the Cadona family, it was an arc slash speedway style attraction. Then later on, it was sold to Rainbow Park before ending up in the hands of John W. Adcroft. He was the one who modified the ride to a waltzer and he also renamed the ride to Ulster scene. At Kayland, this ride was decently poor, because besides, who doesn't want to ride a waltzer named after their home region? Only one photo of this ride exists at Kayland, and I'll have it linked down below due to it being heavily copyrighted. The ride would continue to operate at Kayland until 2003 when it was sold to Michael Sterling. It was then renamed to Hell Chaser. In 2007, it was sold again to Peter Sedgwick, who runs the North, Central and South Pier in Blackpool. The ride was then placed on the central pier in Blackpool and it stayed there until 2010 until it was sold again to Ralph Bibby who still owns the ride to this day. Opening two years later was a Fabry space loop called Topspin. 
The space loop was Fabry's version of the popular Huss top spin. As the top spin was rapidly increasing in popularity, it made sense that Kayland would want to buy one of these attractions. They bought this attraction new from Fabry for the 1993 season. When it opened, it quickly became Kayland's most popular attraction. This was the beginning for something new for Kittyland. It would continue to operate successfully until 1998 when it was sold. The new owner for the attraction would be John Groom and he operated the ride from 1999 till 2003. In 2004, the ride was sold again to John Wall. He travelled with it until 2010. In 2010, it was sold to an unknown fairground operator in Cronesia. A couple of years later, it was sold to Linden Park Bolero in Bosnia and it still is travelling around the country to this day. Also opening the same year was Disco Swing, the world's first Miami ride. This ride was built in-house by Dutch showman Gerrit Teglar. Originally, this ride had magic carpet style seating. However, around 1985, the ride was modified to include forward-facing seats. This created the world's first Miami ride. The ride would also be renamed to Disco Swing and it would go through a couple more Dutch owners until being sold in 1993. The ride would operate Kayland from 1993 to the end of the 1994 season before it being sold to Australia. The ride was sold to Better Amusement Ride Hire who re-themed the ride to Dominator. A couple years later, it was sold to Affordable Rides who still own the ride to this day. This would be the first of a couple of Miamis that would operate at Kayland. Also opening in 1993 was a lupo plane called Sky Screamer. This was built by ESL Engineering, a small company based in Colbrain, which is actually just 10 minutes down the road from Kayland. The company used to build a couple of funfair rides. The ride itself looked very strange and I'll have a photograph linked down below because I couldn't use it. John Adcroft bought this ride new from ESL for the 1993 season and it would continue to operate until 1994. Afterwards, it would go through several English and Scottish showmen before ending up in the hands of Ruben Slater before in the end of the 2009 season it was exported to Bulgaria. It is unknown if it is still operating. Opening in 1997 was a fabric magic carpet called Tapas. Now there isn't a lot of information on this ride so I'll have to keep this brief. Tapas opened in 1997 and it would only run for one year before it would be removed. It would be later relocated to Pleasurewood Hills and it operated there for another year before it disappeared and it's unknown where it is. In 1999, Kittyland would get their most unique attraction, Spider-Man. Like Tapas, information on this ride is very vague, but after doing plenty of research, I think I've found out what happened to this. Spider-Man was one of the two Fabry Hard Rocks that were ever built. The ride was built in 1998 and was owned by Scottish showman Arthur Milne. In 1999, the ride was leased to John Adcroft, who placed it inside Kayland with the intention of buying it if it did well. Unfortunately, this turned out not to be the case and the ride left the park at the end of the 1999 season. It was most likely not sold because of its mechanical issues. Around 2000 and 2001, the ride was sold back to its manufacturer, Fabry. This was most likely due to multiple technical issues. Fabry would then refurbish the ride and re-theme the ride to Hard Rock. The ride would then be sold to Capri's Entertainment in the US and they still travel the ride to this day. In 2006, Kayland would open up a set of Dodgems. John Adcroft bought these Dodgems new from Belgian company Adesco. In my eyes, it was kind of pointless to add a Dodgem track to Kayland because you had two next door at Barry's Amusements. However, these Dodgems would operate for another four years at Kayland before leaving Kayland at the end of 2010. It was sold to Scottish showman Jensen Cadona. Eventually, it was sold in the family to Justin Cadona, who still runs the ride to this day. In 2012, John Adcroft bought his last major attraction, Fast and Furious. This ride was bought new from Harry Steer Manufacturing. It opened in 2012 and became quickly one of Kayland's most loved attractions. It stayed there until 2016. And here's a quick wee secret on the ride. On the ride's backdrop, there's several motorway signs and one of them says Port Rush. A reference to the town the park is located in, obviously Port Rush. After the ride left Kayland, it was sold to Scottish showman Charlie Horn. 
In 2020, it was leased to M&D's theme park and it operated there until halfway through 2021. This is a photograph I took of the ride when it was at M&D's. 2019 brought two Miamis to Keyland. The first one was Street Dancer. This ride was built by Ferma and was owned by Scottish showman Jensen Cadona, the same person who got Adcroft sold Dodgems. The ride was built up at Keyland in early March. However, most of its time at Keyland would have it sitting half dismantled, closed. This is a photograph I took of the ride when it was at Keyland. Keep in mind the park was open the day before. It would operate at Keyland for two more weeks before being removed and replaced by Hulk. In April of 2019, Keyland got the aforementioned Hulk. This ride is owned by Thomas Wilmot and was built by a Dutch company that I cannot pronounce. Before Wilmot's ownership, it was owned by Ivor and Stringfellow and called Gladiator and even before that, it was called Crazy Spin, I think. The ride would open at Keyland in mid-April 2019. I rode this Miami in May of 2019 and it is still my favourite Miami. The ride would continue to operate at Keyland until June 2019 where I was replaced by the runaway train coaster. The ride currently operates at Bondoran Adventure Park seasonally and it's recently gone over the shoulder restraints. In 2020 when Wilmots took over the park, they added two attractions that were owned by Ivan Stringfell. The first one of these was Viva Mexico. This ride was built by Harry Steer Engineering, the same people who built Fast and Furious. It opened in mid-2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I rode it multiple times in 2020 and had a very good operator. Unfortunately it left Keyland at the end of the season and it's a shame that we haven't got another Miami at Keyland. Hopefully this year we will. Now last but not least is Toontown. Like Viva Mexico, this ride was owned by Ivor and Stringfellow. Before Stringfellow's ownership, it was owned by Luna Park Scarborough. Up until around like 2017. Inside the funhouse, there were two barrel wheels as well as a mirror maze. There was also the worst funhouse slide I've ever seen. However, one time I went to Keyland, the effects weren't on. I did not do this funhouse, but I could see the barrels were turned off. The funhouse would leave Keyland at the end of the season. Now that was the former attractions of Keyland Portrush. Please note this list is subject to change because Keyland removes its rides so often. As you can see, Keyland was a completely different place in the 1990s and I hope Thomas Wilmot will add more thrilling attractions to Keyland in the future. Especially since Barry's Amusements is now closing. All photos and videos will be linked down below in the description. Now thank you so much for watching this video and goodbye.